1 Corinthians 11, beginning at verse 23, Paul says, I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. Amen. The uh, substitutionary nature of our Lord's suffering are a central theme of this table and one of the truths of the gospel that we see here. His body was broken as signified in the bread that we will eat together. And his blood was shed, as signified in the wine that we will share, because he offered himself as a sacrifice in our place. This table proclaims his death, uh, just as surely as Isaiah 53, 4-6 proclaims his death. The love of God the Father is at the heart of this table. He is the one who has set the table and invited us. He prepared this banquet for us at great cost. He had to send his son to death in order to welcome the likes of you and me to eat with him. He did not invite people who were worthy or righteous, but he called sinners into the fellowship of his son. What he wants from us more than anything else is the joy of friendship and communion and sharing in his life. The grace of God, the Holy Spirit, is also proclaimed here at this table. He is the one who empowered Yahweh's servant to do that incredible work. He is the one who sanctified the sacrifice that Jesus offered. He is the one who works in our heart to reveal to us, as the people in Isaiah 53 needed it to be revealed to them, that he suffered not for himself but for us, that his work was for our benefit. He teaches us to call Jesus Lord. He's the one who brings the gospel home to our hearts so that we can respond in faith and love. The Father has invited us to this feast. The Son has provided the feast. And the Spirit has brought us to this feast with joy. Changed us into people who hunger and thirst for righteousness and eternal life. And so I, as a minister of the Lord Jesus, have the glad privilege of welcoming and inviting you to his table this morning. This is an invitation from Christ himself. Come and feast. Come and gain strength in your Christian life. Come and gain new depths of joy in your relationship with the Lord. Come to have your heart purified, to strengthen you in your hatred of sin and in your resolve to repent of it. Do not wait until you are sinlessly perfect to come, because if that were the criteria, there would be no feast and there would be no gospel. But come, if you are a sincere believer in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your substitute. Now that means that not all people are invited to come. If you are not a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, this table is something we ask you to watch rather than to participate in so that you may see how precious Jesus Christ to us, and we hope that as his life and death is proclaimed in this observance, that you will find a desire to be one of his people, and that you will want to repent of your sin and look to him for salvation. If uh, you are a believer in the Lord Jesus, we invite you. In order to guard the administration of this table, we ask them that if you have not professed faith publicly, been received into a membership of a Christian church, and if you have not been baptized, that you not participate today, but rather that you seek uh, to enter fellowship with Christ's church, so that we may properly administer this table to your saving benefit. And I'd also add the warning that if you have unreconciled differences with a brother or sister in the Lord, 
that you in good conscience cannot participate at this table until those differences are resolved and you are reconciled. Or if you have willful and unrepented sin in your life that you are not ready to let go of, I warn you in Christ's name, do not partake of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus unworthily. From 1 Corinthians 11, we see that that is a great sin. Just let the elements pass you by, and we encourage you diligently to seek fellowship with Christ as your Savior and His people as your church. With all that said, I'd like to pray and ask the Lord to receive our thanksgiving for His great goodness to us in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name because your mercies indeed endure forever. You are the one who furnished this world with so many good things so that we would be happy in your presence here in this place that you have fashioned for us. You are the one who responded to our sin not in immediate judgment, but in determined grace and forgiveness. Thank you for your promise all the way through the Old Testament of one who would come to bring salvation to sinners so that we may again be at peace with God and have the joy of eternal life in fellowship with Him. Thank you for your goodness to our father Abraham calling him out of Ur of the Chaldees and bringing him to a land that you would give to him and to his seed after him. Thank you for your faithfulness to your people Israel, sending them prophets to warn them of their sin and to proclaim the goodness and the mercy of the God who would forgive their sin if they would turn and repent from it. Thank you, Lord, for sending, above all, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the one who comes from the Father's side to show us his Father and to bring us into fellowship with his Father. Thank you that the love that Father and Son have shared from all eternity has been made available to us in the Gospel. Thank you for sending your Spirit so that we are no longer a valley full of dry bones, but rather living men and women, able to respond by faith and love and commitment and obedience to the call of the Lord Jesus Christ upon our lives. Thank you that you invite us here to this table as a, a sign, a visible sign of your commitment to strengthen us in this world of difficulty and weariness, to, uh, to welcome us even though we had sinned against you, and to bring us into the joy and privilege of those who are welcome at your table. Lord, we ask that you will humble us. We ask, Lord, that you will fix our hearts on the wonderful truth that Jesus Christ died and suffered in our place his body was broken for us and his blood shed for us so that we may not die but live. And we pray that you will set apart the elements of this supper uh, for their intended use today so that they may be a benefit and blessing to all who partake in faith. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for his glory. Amen.